Nakarashi. It's phonetic. It sounds like, while we haven't gotten a new driver in here to talk about it, that they actually really enjoyed this game. Uh, I think they played a completely different game than you did, Chaos, uh, as far as how it played. Uh, but I'm really happy that it seems like both racers were, were happy with this. Yeah, the game was really right. fun. <laughs> yeah, watching uh, the replay, we did play kind of differently, but it's like, I, I really enjoyed the whole going new, 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 cool. <laughs> like, it was a lot of fun, at, like, playing it like that. It's just a really fast-paced, you know. It was, it was, yeah, I really enjoyed the game as well, so. Well, so both of the cards are, are wrong. <laughs> Uh, That's good. That's precisely. That's what? amazing. We, we, no, nothing ever goes wrong here. No. Okay. Let's. We don't have any like of those like super mega veterans who've just played every single game in the world, so hopefully we can get through the uh, the giving of the game without having to repool too much. They're redrawing a game that requires an analog. Just said, games that require analog are usually good. Okay, chat. Uh, I I don't have the ability to pull, but who's cuter, Cabbage Hats, uh, Cabbage Box, or Kurt Q's guy from game that I really should know the name of, and I'm gonna say it's the one that Hero comes from. So it's. <coughs> it's not Xenoblade. It's not Xenoblade, is it? Possibly, it could be Xenoblade. I, yeah. It's. It's the one that like Hero from Smash comes from, where they couldn't even be bothered to name their. Protagonist. I think that's an enemy in Mario 2, I'm pretty sure. Mario 2 as in Mario, Mario 2, 2 or Mario, Mario as in Mario also. Also Mario, yes. Nah, it's... I should know this one. Chat's gonna just say it five times because it's really obvious. Oh, it is Zeno Blade. Okay, good. Dragon Quest! There we go. That sounds that right. One, yeah. My my knowledge, uh, when we get into these commentary booths and it's like half the people are incredibly knowledgeable on Japanese stuff and the other half of us have to uh, have to just sit here and go, yeah. It's it's one of those three things. Like it it comes up in the music rounds too when we do these music games and I'm like, I don't know. It all looks like Genshin Impact to me. I'm sorry. These Toho characters running about on profile pictures. Instead, we got really cute pictures here, and I'm happy about it. Oh. I was going to say, I, the, uh, the game that uh, is coming up, I have on my list of things that I was going to submit and then didn't think that I submitted it but apparently it's been submitted by three different people so uh, oh, we cool. are as long as uh, it's uh, unfamiliar to people this is a game that I have played and played quite recently actually and the pace bin's being posted so let's go alright let's see Yeah, this game is uh, really good. We won't talk about it until we uh, confirm it works for everybody and get up with it, but uh, I'm excited about this one. The race is going to have... we got Kurt Q, who's an absolute veteran and a winning veteran versus Cabbage Hat. And then we've got uh, Aspion or Anisep, who I think 
has only been around for like one or two MTs, but absolutely is a threat versus Nakarashi, who I don't have the card for until uh, FFA puts it up, so. Yeah, I, I didn't put it up because the card for Nakarashi I'll show you. It says Nakarashi was in top 8 for MT16, which I'm pretty sure they weren't. I won't see it until we know if, if they were. The real question is then, who is that? Are the cards flipped, baby? No. No. You, you, you can talk about the dinosaur maybe, avatar, maybe but... Talk yeah. yeah, I mean, so... Nakarashi's profile picture evolved into uh, Aspion's profile picture eventually, right? That's That's how evolution worked. <laughs> Yeah, kind of, sort of. Um, I'm sorry, I will be right back. I do have to do something real quick. But You're I good. Be I'm good enough at talking. I can handle it. Uh, So, Nakarashi, I feel, while we don't have the right card, has been one of those players who's, like, quietly successful. Uh, we've had players around longer and players who are more of a threat to get into top eight, but... Nakarashi is like the sort of player where if you want to have a lot of success in this tournament, you're going to need to beat them, but it's not going to be an easy ask. Uh, NSF, my understanding is that they're uh, going to be more of a puzzler sort of, of gamer just because I believe the thing I know them from is Sudoku. Or Sudoku, if said correctly. For having a race that had like three entrants on the last one, uh, we're we're always going to have more entrants because we have uh, like just more racers. But this uh, is getting quite full. I'm excited to see uh, people play this, and we had three different submitters. Like this has gotten the submission badge too. So if you don't want to enjoy the sweet tones of me and FFEO's voices. Uh, one of the better options here is just go play the go play the game. Oh yeah, Neitzel. Neitzel is also um, who I'm concerned I'm getting uh, Espion mixed up with, but Neitzel makes sense. Okay. Congrats to GFM for getting the credit for the submission. Uh, I'm happy that I didn't actually make a, a uh, pay spin for this, because he saved me five minutes of my life. This is so weird. I'm cropping it in everyone's streams. It seems like the text is not centered. I don't like this. The uh, the the issues with uh, being a restreamer are so like arcane. Um, like it's so funny to me. It looks like uh, we're all getting to the starting line here. So I hope uh, you've got audio and and cropping ready to go, because. So one one it's... of the players doesn't have the the stream up yet. I don't know who it is. Maybe Cabbage Hat? Yeah. Zenic now realizes Cabbage Hat's game is not showing. I'm happy to see, by the way. Uh, we've got so, so crates or so crates or whoever he pronounces or mispronounces his name uh, in this race too. Uh, they've gracefully uh, de declined or delayed their their match, but they're still going to race this, which 
I think could just ruin your mental. The idea of joining a race, doing really well here, and then going, oh, this should have been our race, uh, might not be a particularly healthy thing to do. But I'm happy to see that people who were meant to be playing games at this time are playing games at this time, even if it's not necessarily going to be a race for Mystery Tournament itself. So great, so obviously it has that name because of the love of Ahsoka Ban. Oh. Ahsoka Ban really. is philosophy, this is true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, now we just need now we need to make a this snowdozer if you're if you're around can we can we please have a philosophy philosophy themed uh Sokoban game in in top 8 some some classic uh, puzzle script I'd appreciate it. Are you pushing the box or is the box pushing you? This is precisely the sort of thought process that's important when making a philosophy based Sokoban. Why are you pushing the boxes in the first place? Who's yeah. making you do this? Is it yourself? Is it the boxes or is it someone else entirely? And the thing is, the nice thing is when you get these sort of lore, if we're the one making the game, we could make this like be a forced for a second uh, text instead of a skippable, skippable text. There's so much good skip. Some of these games that we submit have really good or quite funny uh, text or cutscenes that we end up skipping just because it we like to save frames. How dare us! Sometimes you make mistakes. Sometimes you might get cornered. You may want to. Um, well, you made the mistake, um, but there's always another attempt. No. There, there must already. There's so much suck one. Is there like a, a narrator akin to just the, the sort of kind that you usually would get in a walking simulator, uh, mocking you while pushing boxes around, a getting over it style where if you push a box into the corner, you just get told that life is about restarting. No. I think you saw part of the solution, but you've done this a second time, you should... I mean, the first time you make the mistake, it happens. The second time you make the mistake, it also happens. Uh, so we can show what, what the game is now. And the game submitted by three different people. Uh, statically. Yeah, this is some good old PC freeware. Uh, I think it's a jam game from what I recall. And hey, I did submit it. I just never marked it off. The uh, game's basically a puzzle platformer, uh, but more puzzle than platformer for most of it. I thought it was more platformer than puzzle. Maybe, maybe because I did well, and then I do terribly at anything puzzle. Yeah, there's not too much uh, resistance, but I'm uh, in the puzzle until quite late, and then once you do, you do start getting uh, some tricky stuff. It also they start throwing enemies at you. Okay, and we are off. So the basic mechanic here is you are a little piece of electricity. Uh, the controls are whack. Uh, you are both using the mouse to uh, move your little guy based around wherever you are. And then the keyboard, uh, like it's arrow keys, to move through wires. So I know personally that the, the way I was gripping the controls made sense for this level, but you also will be able to jump in the future. So you basically need three hands to play this game. Uh, in general, we need to just get towards the light switch. Uh, but we're going to have many different ways of doing that sort of activity. Yeah, this looks interesting as a concept, honestly. 
Uh, it also looks frustrating as a concept. Yeah, I've so... I've never played this, so... Uh, Kurt Q has reached one of the main mechanics, is you have these little boots. Uh, and you're able to move around the, the light bulb in the boots. Uh, and this is important to be able to get close enough to doors that you need to open. This door could be quite quick. I actually missed this the first try. Uh, where you only have a limited time, but it looks like the players have... Nope, there we go. Cabbage Hat gets stuck by, by the door and has to do another loop around. Oh, uh, if, if nobody said it, I get to say it. Sucker detected. We're pushing blocks now. Pushing blocks, and then there's like a whole bunch of other things going on in the level. Okay, cool. The previous game was not a real empty game. It's not a real empty game if you don't push any any boxes. Maybe it's later. Like maybe just not the demo. Maybe it's in the full game of. Uh... You eventually yeah. are going, going, going to end up pushing blocks as well. Also having to deal with a hundred enemies on screen. So a lot of this game is going to come down to sequencing. It's figuring out where you need to go. Uh, so looking at Kirk Q, I think is marginally uh, leading the way here. Uh, you almost, I think, yeah, you need to be basically on this platform just to be able to make the first jump. And then you need to platform cleanly to not have the uh, the blocks disappear. And here's our first puzzle. Not really a puzzle, but you just... Wait, first puzzle? Yeah, like first, like actually need to involve thought about the uh, the order that you do things in. And it looks like Nakarashi's found the solution, which is uh, put the guy on the platform that will continue to work. Because once you get dropped off the first platform, you just get caught by the second platform. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh. All right. Right, there we go. So yeah, Nakarashi will take a early lead here. To remind everybody, uh, we've most people in chat here have watched a fair amount of uh, Mystery Tournament at this point, even if you're new to Mystery Tournament. But we will have to say it over and over again. It's the top people, the top uh, Nakarashi versus Espeon with the green markers are racing each other. And the bottom uh, racers, Cabbage Hat and Kirk Q, are racing each other. Uh, there's no reward for beating people that you're not particularly racing at. This is a two two-person race that we're doing at the same time. And thankfully, it's a really good game for them to race. Okay, we're moving on to the second world here. I do believe it's a three world game. Does that sound right, FMPO? Uh, I've somehow forgotten everything about this game. <laughs> I'm gonna say like all four racers, though, were. Yeah, all four racers got to this. Um, world pretty pr with pretty similar times, so this is looking pretty close amongst everybody so far. I'm not showing the timers going on stream, by the way. Yeah, this this is when we get to make up a time. Uh, give it thirty more seconds. And uh, we'll be good. So the race here, it's actually going to be quite interesting. The top race is winners. So either uh, Dr. Rashi or Espeon is going to be knocked out uh, by losing this race. Uh, we will see one of these players in the bottom race, though, eliminated as it is a loser's two match. The mechanic here, if it's not incredibly uh, obvious, is just the magnets and at least for these first levels, you just want to have the 
uh, guy stopped magnet halfway through the so you can get the last magnet to pick him up. I don't really recall this puzzle because I did it really quickly, but oh yeah, you just have them all on at the same time. We'll do the trick. Looks like a small lead change here for Aspion, who moves on to another mechanic. Uh, and the reminder is that you are the the little face. You're not like the the thing that you're in. So we're not the pants that we control the pants, and we're not the water. We are the the little face in the water. Uh, and. This will be important in the future, but it also helps that we're now combining mechanics here with the magnet versus the water. And Aspion did that real clean. It didn't look like there was any stoppage at all. They just sight read the whole puzzle, the whole level. And yeah, it looks it. like on the on the bottom, uh, Cabbage Hat has gotten this uh, at least the first part of this down very well. So it's taking a bit of a lead here. It looks like besides the reset, though. Game just continues to throw uh, new mechanics at you. This is uh, the laser turrets. Uh, they are mean. They will kill you immediately, and uh, you'll need to find a way to uh, either block them or turn them off. I'm gonna say that this that, is. Um, Kirky sees it immediately and uh, takes a. Um, Takes a lead in on himself. Yeah, I think this is a three world game with seven seven levels in each world, so it's twenty one levels. Uh, but they do get a fair bit harder. This is actually I think one of the places that you can potentially get walled is drained attraction. Do you recall this level FFO? Um not really. <laughs> It does look like you want to avoid turning on these lasers, so you have to be careful about where you step. Okay, it looks like uh, Espeon did the puzzle correctly, um, but there's a bit of a trap. You need to jump back into your guy, uh, so if you get your guy shot, uh, like what just happened on Kirk Q's screen. You can still survive uh, like as a person, but you need to have the pants available to jump back in once you've done the top puzzle. And so you need to just jump over the platforms at the start of the level, otherwise uh, you're going to run into trouble. So is this like the first real wall level? in this goal do you think yeah i think this is the first spot so there's you also have to make the quick jump out of the turrets not get shot but right now if you look at kirk Q's screen they have nowhere to jump there's pants over there but they're just a bit too far away uh they can go do this again but it will not help them at all and you need to figure it's out like, uh, it's like Aspion got it so yeah Aspion did it first try and has a pretty sizable lead uh, just they naturally jumped over the platforms uh, and avoided the issue. Looks like uh, Nakarashi's done the same, and they're gonna have the pants when they come back. They still need to make this jump and then quickly move, but sacrificing those pants is more than fine. It's intended. As has Cabbage Hat, which means Cabbage Hat, while they're still on the same level, has taken a, a bit of a lead here. And as long as they don't find a way to die to that laser gun here in the near future, should uh, be able to take a small lead against Kirk Q. This is a little spot, though. You need to get into the uh, pants that will be able to climb on the ceiling. Uh, you need to make a little bit of a tricky jump or maneuver there. Cabbage Hat does it perfectly and we'll take a, an actual tangible lead.
and Nakarashi who figured out the uh, the trick. Yeah, Espeon I think has a few few level levels ahead now. Um, I don't think yeah, I don't think this is the same level. I'm I'm not as familiar with this game as you are, so you're good. I think uh, Espeon just did what was a speed required level, uh, and they just did it really quickly, so there was no issues. Uh, we now move on to a new mechanic. Uh, the purple stuff will kill you, uh, but the purple stuff can sometimes be manipulated. Uh, and Espeon has not figured out the trick. Uh, the trick is that you are the spark, you are not the, uh, the pants. So your pants can actually walk through the purple, but you need to hold the spark above the, uh, above the goo. Uh, and so you don't immediately die to the goo and your pants don't really care. Your pants can go in the goo as much as they want. <laughs> your pants can go into the goo as much as they want. Precisely. Uh, this one's a weird one, but I trust Espeon can figure it out. Yeah, I remember this one. I took a bit to figure it out, but I thought it was really cute once I figured out that you just hold this part away from the purple thing. And then you have to do some tricky jump here to not get the spark into the purple. Yeah, I think this is going to be the bulk of the the time spent. Like we're 12, 12 minutes or so into the race and I would expect like the winner to spend another 12 minutes on the last seven levels. Uh, just because this mechanic and the puzzles that are upcoming are just more difficult. Looks like Kirk Q has also progressed from uh, Strange Attraction and is, I think, still behind, but uh, yeah, with uh, everybody moving on to the purple levels, uh, World 3, uh, it's not like anybody's got a unsurmountable lead in either race. Yeah, Kevich has just got to the uh, purple U levels. Uh, Kirk Hugh is on this, um, probably the one before it, so... Yeah, this one's looking pretty close, I think. On the bottom. So, Kirk, uh, sorry, Espeon... No, Kirk's here. one behind. Uh, our, our top right racer is dealing with a little bit of a sequencing issue, where you need to open the door it's just sight reading these really well. Yeah, Kirk saw me that one immediately, so we're all oh, on level purple goo. Yeah, uh, top right's gonna be the interesting. We're we now have enemies, and we need to get back across the uh, the whole level. Are we really gonna first try this? I'm so furious if we do. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No. I, no. <laughs> now, no, I now, I'm, to see now that. I can be sad. No, I, I was gonna be so mad if they, uh, they first tried this this level. Uh, so, the issue that at least I was personally having is you're trying to do arrow keys, uh, while also controlling the mouse, but you also need to do spacebar, and I couldn't find a control to like put the jump on a different button so it's a lot of maneuvering about that isn't necessarily apparent when you're just watching it but second try there is really good yeah uh, second let's method. try and not really giving much room for nakarashi to make a comeback uh, if anything just continuing to outpace no 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 no, no. <sighs> kirk q is very greedy there to uh, go before the, uh, the and try and outrace the turret. I, I was very concerned. I mean, that could be a strat if Kirk knows that he, he can. It worked. Why not try it? Okay, uh, we got multiple racers here at the double door. Kirk Q does it immediately, as does Nakaraji. These guys are racing today. But I think Itchy Back could be a wall for at least somebody. It'd be really annoyed if everybody found what I found to be like the second most difficult level. 
uh, or at least thought-provoking level to be quite simple and easy. I remember I had issues with 3-4, which is where Aspion is right now. Because those those enemies really are in, in the way. Yeah, so the enemies are asleep currently, and we need to turn the generator both to turn the enemies on, which is unfortunate, uh, but the enemies are sitting on top of where we need to go. So, uh, we need to be thoughtful about how we manipulate them. Kirk's got some interesting strats here, like, you know, chasing them into basically taking all these enemies and kind of putting them in the same place. And then once they're essentially one enemy, or just do this, that, that, that works too. Yeah, uh, Chaos, if you're not already, make sure that you're watching the uh, stream provided in Discord. Uh, All right, the, one sec. yeah, you're yeah. good. The, right. uh, the ghosts here, and but the strategy that you mentioned of making all the enemies pile up is really helpful, and it will be continue to be helpful. Uh, I think on the last level of the goal, uh, which I think we're already at. This is crowd control. This is, I believe, the end of uh, the game, uh, or close to it for Aspion. Um, we have a, just a large combination. We have our pants, we have our enemies, we have our water, and you need to open the gate, which involves turning on the uh, the button, which involves grabbing the pants, and to do that we need to avoid the enemies while going through the water, so it's kind of a culmination of everything we've been doing so far. And among the unofficial racers, Socrates just finished, so it's looking good for his race, but probably wishes he raced this game, <laughs> officially. Exactly. Good stuff there from Nakarashi, avoiding the enemies. Uh, having a more familiar amount of uh, trouble. And now you can see on Espeon's screen what you were talking about there earlier, Chaos, with the enemies all piled up. Oh, I lied. It wasn't the last level. It's the last level that gave me a uh, hassle and therefore I remember it. Because there's a boss level. Would be a good puzzle game if it didn't have an unnecessary boss. This thing looks like it's about to make a bunch of whaling noises and give you about 56 uh, kilobits per second of internet. <laughs> I think uh, meanwhile, Kirk Hughes actually really up up the pace there. They're uh, they're keeping up with our race leader, and they're taking the lead in the bottom race. Uh, this boss does precisely what you think it does. Uh, is annoying, but eventually gives you the opportunity to um, overcharge it or some equivalent. Okay, Kirk Hugh hasn't figured out the uh, the mechanic just yet. That gate does not open with the electricity. The gate opens with the button, which uh, I think he'll eventually figure out. There's just not that many options, but... Meanwhile, Espeon has a new friend to have to deal with, uh, the boss beyond uh, trying to kill you, uh, does also have these ghosts, which... Now there's two of them, and I think that's the max amount of ghosts. That's been doing a really good job of just getting the ghosts to sit, stand next to each other, which makes them less threatening. 
Is this the last one? <laughs> Looks like it. That's gonna be a finish there from Aspion. GG. GG's. And uh, while it, while that was happening, Kirk Q has moved on to the boss. It's actually a really close race because Cabbage Hat is just on the level that Kirk Q was on. Uh, basically level 20 and level 21 of a 21 game goal. And Kirk Q can finish this off just by one-shotting the boss, but I think it's a pretty decent ask the uh, without knowing the boss's patterns. Yeah, and I saw Cabbage Hat has uh, gotten the idea of um, put all of the enemies close to each other, so... This could go either way. If Kirk gets walled by the boss, he will. But... Kirk has been, like, accelerating, though. I think they had more trouble than some of the other racers at the beginning of this game. They've gotten a good grasp of the mechanics here. His pants are on the left side, so he's going over to the left side and juking the enemy. I think it's only one more attack. This is not a good pattern, though. Makes it a good pattern by staying down there a bit longer and then ruins it by uh, trying to head over again a bit too quickly. Meanwhile, Cabbage Hat is onto the boss. Good job. Uh, had a huge mob of purple guys following them, but figured out what the puzzle was and then uh, mechanically executed. Uh, this is gonna be down to the second. Yeah, uh, Kirk's got stage knowledge against this boss, so um, he's still probably a little ahead, but that's not exactly tangible. We'll see, though. This is a close race. This is a really good race. Okay, we're on one ghost for... Cabbage Hat has taken a lead. Uh, Cabbage Hat is just further into this boss fight uh, than Kirk Q, with no if, knowledge if of it. If can get this first try, then yeah. Okay, we're he seeing pan behind. pants on the right, and uh, Cabbage Hat just learned something. And the boss isn't doing their attack. You can actually go through them. Uh, the, the boss floating about isn't particularly threatening. Nope, too slow though. Uh, Cabbage Hat <laughs> not able to get over to their pants. And that's going to even us up. Good baiting though, waiting for the ghost to get nice and close, not stressing about it, and uh, therefore not having to deal with the, uh, the ghost. Now two ghosts, I think this is last no. hit if they can get it. Oh. Oh. Needed to go up. This is such a yeah. close race. Okay, so Kurt Q is now uh, the provisional leader, and they've already failed this uh, this 50-50 go up or go go low on the upper wire. Uh, this isn't going to be last hit. There's a second ghost to show up, and this might be too slow. Yeah, too slow. Yeah. I like the idea of staying in the middle uh, so you can get back to the left side where your pants were, uh, but the boss did not like the idea, and we're back to Cabbage Hat having the small lead. Okay, it's one ghost versus zero ghost at this point. Uh, we need to go over to the left side though, that's where our pants are. But we don't want to do it too quickly. Good juke around, I think this is too slow though. We're not going to be able to do it. Because uh, the boss is just going to jump away. It's back to basically tied at this point. Yeah, I'm looking at this. Cabbage Hat probably realized that and just kind of sat for a little while. Yeah, I can't, I'm not going to hit this, so... Kirk Hughes taken a small lead here. This is down to seconds, though. If they both get the boss here uh, back to back, it will genuinely be a retime. Kirk Hughes on the wrong side. Uh, their, their pants are on the right no, side, but Cabbage Hat just drops it. Cabbage Hat just, uh, just dies, and so Kirk Hughes could be a slightly more patient. Not that they would know this. They're both probably stressing out tremendously. And that'll there be it. Is. Kirk Hughes takes the win. <laughs> the wow that, that yeah that race in the bottom is very close wow yeah uh i mean to note we've got nakarashi who's struggling with crowd control i'm happy to see that the levels that i thought were hard 
give at least some of our racers a bit of grief. Not happy to see though, we do see a forfeit, which given uh, a lot of dot duns are coming in uh, and uh, end up playing against second out of like 10 people to finish. Uh, just a bit of misfortune there from Nakarashi. We do finally see, uh, I say finally, a uh, bit coy, but uh, Cabbage Hat uh, does finish off less than a minute uh, behind Kirk Q. Yeah, also, you, you, also a very close race, and the times reflect that. So, GG to both. Oof. Uh, yeah, if uh, if the racers were making the mistake of looking at the IRC all through that too, uh, we were seeing finishes uh, right after Curcue. Two seconds later, uh, we had a finish from LG's boy, a fun racer. But when you're looking at, at these sort of things, uh, you're going to have heart spikes. Uh, we got four people to potentially interview. Uh, let's see if anybody wants to jump in here. And we have Kurt Q, uh, with your icon that I've completely, uh, destroyed chat by saying it was from Genshin Impact or whatever I said, but... Oh my G gosh. <laughs> <laughs> someone uh, this guy? We got uh, a race that I think you know is close, but you might not know how close it was. It was uh, back and forth on that final boss. Uh, I think you'll have a good time if you rewatch it. Uh, overall thoughts on the game, though? Oh man, I I feel like I played really well up in, or solid up until the final boss, and like I almost first tried that final boss, and what happened was I thought there was a stop in the corner, like the top right corner, and it doesn't stop you there; it curves you down, and so it curved me down, and I ran into one of the things, and I guess I was one hit from killing him first try. But yeah, we've got Cabbage Hat who. I'm gonna say, uh, just based on my instinct, spent slightly less time on the boss, but just got there uh, a bit later. Uh, that final boss, Cabbage Hat, what were your thoughts? What, what was going through your head? Let my heart rate get, go down a little bit first. I'm just calming down. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know, like, it's a really simple final boss. I think it's just tiny little mistakes are the things that um, that mess me up. Yeah, you were doing a good job of having the two ghosts kind of sync up immediately. Uh, but yeah, both, yeah, I know. Both, you, <laughs> both you got to a point where you had two ghosts on screen. Uh, you might not have necessarily known it, but you were on final hit and then just found new and clever ways to, uh, to make it Unfortunately, this was, a loser's... <laughs> this was a loser's match, which means mm -hmm. uh, for this particular uh, MT uh, Cabbage, uh, you are, if you're racing, it's going to be alongside other races, but a fantastic showing from both of you. Uh, Thank you. Cabbage, I don't think we've asked, uh, did you actually enjoy the game? Did you enjoy the race uh, beyond your heart pumping? Uh -huh. It was a, yeah, it was a real edge of my seat thing. Um... I feel like I would have enjoyed it more if my hands weren't cold. Uh, I think, and I'm never one to blame external factors when it comes to like my performance, but I can feel it. Like it wasn't uh, easy to move the mouse back and forth to like get just the right spot. Maybe that's just the game. I don't know. No, I, I had the issue. It didn't look like it from. Uh, we had a bunch of racers, but we also had uh, Espion on screen, and they made it look seamless. Uh, I personally, between like having the arrow keys being a fair bit far away from my space bar, which was the default jump, and then also dealing with the mouse, I felt like I wanted three hands. Was that true for either of you guys? Um, it took me a little while to get used to. It's like, I don't know, splitting your brain a certain way. I, I've Kirk? played plenty of games that like WASD and space bar with the mouse, I guess. the The tricky part was like, 
I guess. So, like, right, when you're in the water looking stuff, your, your mouse is, like, a new function that it wasn't before. Right? You're going to your mouse. You're not using the mouse to, like, draw around. And so, like, context switching between, like, okay, I'm moving like this, now I'm moving like that was kind of tricky. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, any... And, like, it, it's not hard to avoid the pink gas, but, like, just switching between all the controls, all of a sudden you forget that, like, like at, at some points I was like, oh, yeah, there's pink gas there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions that you guys had, uh, Chaos or FFAO? Good chat. Uh, this is a really fun race to watch, honestly. So, geez, everyone. Yeah, uh, beyond it being really close, I think uh, there's a reason why this game got submitted three times. Uh, hmm. is we, we were excited about just the potential of this and it paid off with you guys. Um, even Cabbage, I know that you lost this and maybe not immediately, but I think this is going to be a fun stream to watch and just see uh, the back and forth nature, especially there at the end, but really throughout the whole race, you guys were neck and neck. I'm not good enough for runaways. I'm, I'll settle for good matches. Yeah, that was an extremely good one. I do heavily recommend rewatching it. It is so good this went but definitely went back and back so yeah uh we had a four first there from nakarashi but they did finish uh their off stream and hit us with a what a game so it sounds like even uh the people who lost their races were very much uh into what we forced them to play that's always a nice thing to hear um we do actually have other games coming up uh, we're not kicking you guys, you guys out but uh we this is going to be a, just a full day of uh, MT. Uh, any one of the other ones. Any After final thoughts? To calm down. <laughs> any anything that happened in like you know the first three fourths of the ra the race that we need to talk about that got eclipsed by the fact that that final boss was stressful. I mean, I got my guy stranded like four times. <laughs> that was cool. I got stranded in the final boss. I was like, how did I go from my dude to the wall and I can't go from the wall back to my dude? I might, yeah, maybe on, I jumped or something. On the level where you uh, go to the right side and then you wake up all the guys and then you go back to the left side, I was having so much issue with the mouse of going around that particular purple goo that I actually just reached into like max distance and just went dude to dude mm -hmm. uh and mm -hmm. i went watching you guys find what should be a very linear uh puzzle game like there shouldn't be more than one solution for these things and finding out that there were uh was interesting for me as somebody who submitted this game okay uh unless we're uh getting more interviews you run me out of questions I'm excited about now we get Rickry who's I think raced this. We got uh we got Socrates who actually won this race is coming up. Uh, we got a lot of good racers and presumably a lot of good races as long as uh we don't get handed some more NES mediocre platformers, I'll I'll be happy. What I love those. <laughs> Yo, mediocre in a mystery tournament is a blessing. Kirk, uh you <laughs> you are moving on. Is is that what you're looking forward to if uh if and when you play your uh your losers three match or and onward um i don't really know like i've i've been kind of hot and cold lately like in, in this race i feel like i played the beginning well and the end bad but, you know in a race before that you know i got caught up on one or two levels so well you've got to do well now kirk you're my champion of mediocrity oh no um <laughs> i i guess i don't want average platformers because I, I haven't been delivering that well but I'll take <laughs> anything else some real whack, wacky stuff just a genre that I, doesn't I'm too thinking and I, I'm more of a thinker than a than a good player these days well your your reward is going to be uh, more Hello Kitty games it sounds like so I've probably played one or two of those yeah <laughs> Uh, thank you guys for joining us, uh, especially thank you. Chat it's been a pleasure. for uh, yeah. doing it as the loser, which is always slightly harder. Uh, that being said, big GG's, great race. Uh, you guys have put on a show for us, and uh, we're thankful for it.
<laughs> See you next MT. Yep, GG's, thanks for hosting. That's not me, that's on FFAO, who... And thank you to all of our hosts. Uh, FFAO's been champion this morning, but anybody and everybody who takes on the host role. Casting's easy, I just talk. Uh, but hosting is necessary. We actually had one match this morning that didn't have a host, and it was a great race. I'm excited for the rehost, but uh, it's important that we have these hosts. Yeah, looking forward to the podcast, and thank you FFAO for the restreams, as always. Thanks a lot for yeah, our race. You made this a lot easier than us. I figured out where all our casters are. They're all in the uh, ominous tester party. Alpha and TPC have been there all morning. Presumably getting us more games to just toss straight into the queue. <laughs> <laughs>